Gold went down from 1700, 1800. I don't remember exactly. It went down to a low of 1450. It's like, oh, why is gold going down? But if you if you measured gold to commodities ratio, it went to an all time high. I remember that was the all time high of, for gold prices against pretty much everything ever in economic history. I'd say it was doing pretty well. Even so, we're going to have a final financial crisis. It's going to be the last one. I'm willing to hang my hat on that. The gold prices are going to go down temporarily. And then the Fed's going to provide all the dollars that everybody needs for the next, I don't know, year, which is probably going to be about seven, eight, nine trillion dollars. And then it's just going to, gold is just going to go vertical, which means that the dollar is just going to go down. And uh, then you're going to see a real panic. So I think we're months away from that. It could be any time now. Rafi Farber, a prominent figure in financial forecasting, foresees an impending financial crisis. He anticipates a temporary dip in gold prices before a sharp ascent. He predicts that as central banks inject trillions of dollars into the economy, the dollar's value will decline, driving gold prices skyward. During his recent press conference, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell discussed the potential slowdown in the central bank's balance sheet reduction, suggesting it could lead to a more significant reduction in holdings. Powell highlighted the importance of managing this process to avoid disruptions, aiming for lower bond holdings to mitigate volatility. Powell emphasized the Fed's objective of maintaining adequate liquidity in the banking sector to navigate market fluctuations. However, he cautioned that there's no fixed rule for ending the balance sheet reduction, indicating the complexity of the decision-making process. Since late 2022, the Fed has allowed significant treasuries and mortgage bonds to expire without replacement. Rafi Farber warns that this, coupled with escalating debt levels and a contracting money supply, could precipitate a crisis, although the exact timing remains uncertain. Farber expresses surprise at the recent rally in gold prices, particularly given the lack of enthusiasm among investors and no significant expansion in the money supply. Despite this, gold's performance remains robust, reflecting underlying market dynamics. Looking ahead, U.S. data releases may influence gold's trajectory particularly the core Personal Consumption Expenditures Index, a key inflation metric favored by the Federal Reserve. However, with Friday being a public holiday in many countries, trading volumes could be subdued, potentially tempering market movements. Join us as we delve into insights shared by Rafi Farber. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. The sign? I mean, there's signs everywhere. I'd say the most salient sign is how insane people are. Uh, that there are no more borders in the United States and that uh, there's no more sexes. I mean, we're all just one fluidic sex. Um, I guess there's no more reproduction. Uh, basic logic is out the window pretty much everywhere. So yeah, things are cracking and it doesn't, it doesn't take a genius to see that. In terms of the price of gold, you know, it goes, <laughs> it goes up and goes down. I can't say if this rally is uh, what is uh, going to precipitate the end of the banking system, as we know it, in terms of the proximate cause. Previous interview, I forgot who was maybe Liberty and Finance. Um, yeah, it was Liberty and Finance. And they asked me, you know, what do I think about the latest gold rally? I think it was in March 4th or 5th when it really started. And I was like, frankly, I'm surprised um, because the monetary supply, the money supply isn't moving up. So what is causing what is causing this? It's actually it's still moving down. It's it's been moving slightly up, but nowhere near the um nowhere nowhere near the top it was in April 2022. So it's still moving down. So then why are gold prices moving that? And there's no excitement among the stackers. All the excitement is in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies and all this other magic. Even those who chase ETFs aren't chasing them. GLD has been shedding. Uh, has been shedding ounces, shedding tons, and so have all the other ETFs. So uh, there's the, where's the excitement? What's going on? And it seems to be in the banks versus the high net wealth individuals are the ones who are having a war here because nobody else is involved. Usually when when the, the gold price moves like this, there's something going on in the banking system, but nobody can really identify exactly what it is until it happens. And we know something is going to happen because something always happens. Just by the sheer force of the logic of it, the more debt you issue, the more dollars are needed to pay it back. Uh, if you're shrinking the money supply at the same time, you're going to require more and more dollars on a smaller and smaller monetary base, and then something's going to explode. So nobody knows exactly where the fault line is, but it's going to happen. So it could be that the, the gold price is saying that that is near. Um, but when, when it does happen, it's going to bring gold prices down just a lot less than everything else. 
that's one of the confusing things in 2020 when gold went down from uh, whatever it was, it was uh, 1700, 1800, I don't remember exactly. It went down to a low of 1450. And everyone was like, oh, why is gold going down? But if you if you measured uh, the gold to commodities ratio, it went to an all-time high. I remember, like oil was at negative 35 and gold went down from 1800 to 1450. Oh, my gosh, it's so scary. Um, silver went down more. Uh, but that was the all-time high of, for gold prices r- against pretty much everything uh, ever in economic history. So I'd say it was doing pretty well. Uh, but still, even even so, we're going to have a final financial crisis. It's going to be the last one and gold prices are going to go down temporarily. And then the Fed's going to provide all the dollars that everybody needs for the next, I don't know, year, which is probably going to be about seven, eight, nine trillion dollars. And then it's just going to, gold is just going to go vertical, which means that the dollar is just going to go down. And uh, then you're going to see a real panic. So I think we're months away from that. It could be any time now. Rafi Farber acknowledges historical silver market manipulation, but sees optimism for its end, anticipating a potential market shift. They believe conditions for a significant silver rally may arise soon, drawing parallels to the transformative period of 1978 to 1979. During this period, market participants became increasingly convinced of a severe shortage of silver metal, fueling expectations of a substantial price increase. By the final quarter of 1979, silver prices soared between $15 and $25 per ounce. However, several physical market forces ultimately acted against further price escalation. In 1979, the price of silver, as measured by the London Fix, surged from $6.08 per troy ounce on January 1, 1979, to a record high of $49.45 per troy ounce on January 18, 1980, an astonishing increase of 713%. Silver futures also reached an intraday COMEX all-time high of $50.35 per troy ounce. Let's get back to the interview. Silver is, and I believe, and I don't, it sounds like an article of religious faith, but it's an article of logic, right? I believe in the regression theorem or the regression principle of Mises, where the, uh, the point is that all prices have to move back into the past or else there's no such thing as prices. Like what I just said before, of, well, can they have a reset where they just give people a random amount of dollar of central bank digital dollars or Fed coins or whatever, and then everyone's and expect everyone to behave? No, they can't because prices only make sense if they're extended back into the past, into yesterday, into 10 years ago, into 100 years ago, into 1,000 years ago, into whenever civilization started. Right. And money is literally the most liquid commodity. And the liquid, the most liquid commodity for the public has always been silver. And it still is. Right. The only reason it seems illiquid now is because we use gold derivatives. There's no there's no need for silver if you have a derivative that can divide gold into any amount, into any Satoshi amount. You know, let's talk about the Bitcoin coinage uh, terminology here. It's really popular now. So a Satoshi of, of silver can be accomplished by a penny or you know any digital thing that you want. So there's no need for the actual physical material. Now, so it looks illiquid when the gold derivative is no longer functioning. What are you going to divide gold with to make a retail purchase of groceries at a store? Like, what are you going to use? A, a gold coin? You know, the entire supermarket might be worth a gold coin. So, what are you going to do? Like, here's a gold coin. Give me your entire supermarket or two aisles of food or whatever it's going to be. You're going to need the material. I think we're in 1978. So, from 1974 to 1978, you know, gold, silver made a high of whatever. I think it was like six dollars and fifty cents or whatever it was, 1974 or early 1975. And then until late 1978, nothing was happening, right? And gold was heading higher, new nominal highs uh, every now and then, going up and down, new nominal high, and then a scary jerk down, new nominal high. That was that's what gold was was doing. Silver was doing nothing. So what do you think the silver bugs were saying back then? Oh, silver is a manipulated market and it's not money. But but it is because you have to go back into the past. And before we were on a gold standard, we were on a silver standard. Um, they were saying the same thing in the 1970s. And then all of a sudden in, 19, in early 1979, silver started to move very, very fast. And what does that mean? It means the public is finally aware that something is going on and that they need to protect themselves. And it's always silver because that is the money that all prices are based are based on. We got off the silver standard in 1873. We moved silver to gold 
in 1873 as a first step towards centralizing the monetary system. It happened all the way back then, 151 years ago. I understand the sentiment. I understand that silver, the monetary silver markets is a manipulated market. It's been a manipulated market since 1873. Nothing new there. Uh, but it's not going to remain that way. Um, the only question is when. That's always the question. And I think it's not far. It's a month, maybe a year. If we're in 1978, 1979 is the year. Investors are cautious as silver's price sits at $24, indicating vulnerability in the commodities market dynamics. How do you anticipate the silver market dynamics evolving in light of historical manipulation and the potential for a market shift, as suggested by Farber? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.